the kinky people, the sexy people. Welcome to KEM Top Talk. I'm your host, Maribel Blue, and I'm sitting here with none other than Chuck Platinum, who at the last minute now is uh, co-hosting the show with me. And I'm having fun nice. with this. I'm, I'm having fun with people coming in mm -hmm. and like co-hosting with me. Oh, that's cool. Different people. That's good. Man, like I gotta get comfortable with A new idea that's just been implemented. Okay, all right. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm conceived in the conception. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, on today's show, we are going to have, of course, Chuck as my co-host and as my guest and as our musical guest nice. <laughs> later this evening. We will have Mistress C. We're having a little bit of difficulties um, with the with the Skype, but if we don't have her on Skype, we will have her on the phone. And when she's visiting here in New York, we will definitely have her here in the studio because we we have to have her here. Um, so let's start off with this call into the show because. Chuck and I, we've been blasting Twitter with the phone yes, number. Yes, Call and don't Call be up. shy, 631-882-6900. If you have any questions for our guest, no, that's not the phone number. I know that she's on the phone. <laughs> I'm doing my news first. I'm talking to the people in the back because they're directing me. <laughs> no, I need to I need to say this first. Okay. I was watching Wendy Williams earlier this week and mm -hmm. she had Donnie Deutsch on. Okay. Who's cute. And he's single. Mm. And he was checking Wendy out. Nice. He said he likes curvy women. And Wendy now, is definitely when, curvy. when a white man is saying he likes curvy women, mm -hmm. what is he saying? <laughs> he likes women of color. Yes. Here I am, Donnie, right here, because I like white boys. <laughs> it's a perfect match. <laughs> she likes white boys. She likes white boys. <laughs> and you like curvy women? I got it. You know, Wendy Williams is married. I'm not. I'm single. You're single. What's up, right? <laughs> so I like the hookup. We need to make that happen. Yes, for real. Yeah, I don't care about that. your money. Maybe just a teeny bit. <laughs> she said a little bit. Just like this. It did, did much. Just did, a teeny bit. It did, did much right just a, <laughs> just a little bit. Maybe Chuck will make a song about that. I will. I'm going to call it Donnie Deutsch. It's going to be the song. <laughs> and I just care about your money just a little just a, bit. I just care about your money just a little, little bit. Okay. All right, there. <laughs> It will come. It will come all together. Now, I understand that we have Mistress C on the phone um, because, again, we were having technical difficulties with Skype. Now, before I just put her on the phone, I need to say this. Mistress C, I met her last year uh, for Exotica, and then I met her at Exotica at her dungeon experience. One of the most fantastic women. She's fantastic. You have to meet her. I can't wait well respected in the BDSM community. She knows her stuff. You've got to check out her interview on kinkymagazine.com. Mm -hmm. um, it's in the uh, February issue. It's like I have to remember off the top of my head. I'm doing so many things at one time. One of the best interviews I've ever done. Mm -hmm. She's a fantastic person. She's a fantastic human being. She knows her stuff. Mistress C, can you hear us? Hello? Hello? I don't hear her. Hello, are you on? Uh, this is the part where we play the horn fail for the prices, right? Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, we'll try it again. <laughs> We're going to get back to you again on that one. <laughs> Too bad we ain't had the Skype because Miss C, Mr. C looked kind of good there. Yeah, she sure good. did. Yeah. Speaking of which, mm -hmm. hmm, now that you put yourself out there, yeah. you know Mistress C is a very dominant woman. Yeah. And you seem like a very dominant man. Yes. Would you submit to Mistress C? I, I, I don't know. Tell probably, the truth. I'll play the role, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how far it's going to go. <laughs> you know, if it starts getting a whooping, I'm whooping back. <laughs> I know how to crack that whip too. 
just to see you early. Holla at me, baby. Mm. You know, we just followed on Twitter and all that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Look, got to give you the good wing. Listen to you. <laughs> that was a shameless plug right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you yeah. another question sure. regarding, you know, uh, BDSM lifestyle. Okay. Because, you know, people take that lifestyle very seriously. Absolutely. A couple of weeks ago, I had author C.J. Cassidy here mm -hmm. in the studio. Um, he wrote the book uh, Trilogy, Trilogy Tortured Soul. I always pronounce that wrong. Mm. But, you know, it's a trilogy of three different books. Okay. Um, a Tortured Soul, uh, Living La Vida Puta, mm. which is a very good book. Okay. I was I was reading it, and uh, I was laughing my ass off on the train. Because really? The... The way the book is written, it's so on point. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you're having a conversation with somebody. Oh, cool. And that's what I like about these books. You know, everybody's like raving about Fifty Shades, and it's like, okay, mm -hmm. fine. Did you read the reviews? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But, you know, um, CJ is a very good author because right. he's using real life stories okay which I think you know that was the premise of why I started my magazine in the first place mm -hmm. people that submitted their erotic stories right. were real life stories right. because you know we live in this realistic world now where we want to see people's inside world Everything. reality TV Everything. and all of this stuff and um, you know because some people don't have a life of their own but that's okay because you know you you bring us the money. <laughs> That's what we're here for. We're here to make your life more exciting. That's exactly why, baby. Right, exactly. Right. So with that being said, you, you know, you knowing this, I mean, it's like, how would you feel if you met a woman who was extremely dominant and you just fell in love with her and mm -hmm. she said, this is the way it's got to be? <sighs> what do you think of when you hear the word submissive? I like to ask, ask this to men because it, it makes me wonder when, what when, goes through their mind. When I hear the word submissive, I think woman. You think woman? Yes. You don't think like errands and Yeah, I don't tasks. think. I mean, I don't, for myself, absolutely not. I mean, you know. No, I don't think, you know, we could play around a little bit, but, you know, there's, there's a line that got to be drawn. It's just, you know, I don't know. Some guys are into that stuff. So. Well, because what it is is that, right. you know, there are some people that live it 24-7. Right. So the submissive is always submissive. Mm -hmm. They're always in that in that role. Right. You know, like I have a submissive. You do? Yes. Oh. I have a, well, you know, sometimes I feel funny about using the word slave, but okay. that's, you know, the lingo that yeah. we I use. I think women it. have, I think <laughs> women, women, all women got a little submissive, <laughs> slave, you know what I'm saying? You know. And he's very good. He does all of my secretarial work for me. And he's happy. Oh, he loves it. Yeah? He loves it. The, wow. the most fun part is when I put him on chastity. And not for just like a day or two, right. for like a month. Wow. <laughs> wow. And then he has to blog it, you know, and I make really? him watch, yeah, like certain videos. Does he have like a lot of people that really look into his blog and all of that? I don't know. I hope so. so I hope so, too. Read I mean, the wow. torture. I mean, because this, this is just one aspect right. of BDSM. If somebody came to you and said, you know, I'd like for you to be my sub and, and you have to be in chastity for a week. Mm. And then watch like X-rated videos of like torture and stuff. Wow, that's deep. That's deep. How would you feel? I don't know. I'd probably run. <laughs> I, I probably would. I, I I probably well. Oh no, I don't. <laughs> then what you was can't your number touch again? Yourself at all. Yeah. You know, there's even contractions that they have for men. So wait, you're saying that that. He can't, he got to watch all of this stuff and be turned on, I guess, and, and he can't do anything to himself at all. Yep. <laughs> well, being that, you know, I don't get to do that anyway, I guess I wouldn't be missing anything, right? <laughs> you know. Catch yes. me about 10 years ago, you know, I might have <laughs> been a little a different, different story. story. Yeah, but, uh, you know, nowadays, you know, I don't get too much time to be doing that a little but you know that they have actual contraption that goes into, like a cup, really? that goes into a man's penis. A cup? Yes. Really? It's, and it's like a lock device. Right. Almost like a glass, right. you know? 
And then if he like gets hard, he can't because. <laughs> Are you see, the, yeah, see, see that's, that's see that's that's bad. <laughs> see, what do you mean that I can't get hard? What do you mean? What it you won't mean? let you. See, me and like my friend, sure are, well, we are one. You know what I'm saying? Like me, and, this guy right here, me and him are one. We are one. So for me to be see how you men feel about your penises? I love my penis. Are you kidding me? Me and my penis are best friends. He done got me through all kind of tight times. Uh, well. When we come back, <laughs> we'll hear about the relationship with Chuck's penis. <laughs> nice. Nice. And maybe we'll talk about his music, too, yeah, and things maybe. that he's up to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe we will get into that talk. Then. Hold on. Maybe at the end of the show. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back at KEM Top Talk with your host, Maribel Blue, and my co-host, Chuck Platinum. Chuck Platinum, baby. about Geico. Now mobile. Download the new Geico app today. This is Tom Mealy for 1-800-INJURY-LAW. You know, for years, you've heard me talk about people injured in accidents, soft tissue fractures, sometimes even worse. I've made it very clear that you need to understand what happens to your body when in an accident, especially a soft tissue injury. Now, let me get something straight. Firms that try to duplicate my message don't stand up to the years of experience of this team. The bottom line, I am Tom Mealy. The voice you've heard for years, the guy associated with the team of attorneys fighting every day to get you the compensation you deserve. By calling 1-800-INJURY-LAW, I will continue to guarantee my undivided attention as well as the attention of the most talented team of attorneys here on Long Island. Now understand this, 1-800-INJURY-LAW, we're not a bunch of prima donnas. Accidents, they don't keep bankers' hours, and neither do we. It's simple. It's the Harrison Law Group. It's 1-800-INJURY-LAW. Hey, what are you drinking? I'm drinking Dunkin'. Definitely Dunkin'. You know, I need to get that jolt in the morning, but I want something good to do that. I love the aroma. I love the taste. You can't mistake the flavor. I run on Dunkin'. America runs on Dunkin' Coffee. Number one. Hi. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good evening. <laughs> We're back. What, what is that? Uh, the Looney Tunes song? Boo -doo boo, boo -doo boo. <laughs> they're switching. <laughs> oh, like you know when the people do the news mm -hmm. and they're like, and in today's news, blah 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 blah, and it's like over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have Mr. C. Mr. C? Yes, I'm here. Yay, she's here. Yes, she's you here. are. <laughs> can you, can you, you can hear me good. That's good to hear. Oh, yes. Yeah. We yes, hear we can hear you good. Now, I don't know if you caught the conversation Hello. earlier. Uh, Chuck was uh, admiring you. Oh, lovely Chuck. How are you doing, Chuck? I'm, I'm fine. Hey. I'm fine. We're now we're Twitter friends, aren't we? Yes, yes we are. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, we wanted to 
d finish discussing the the aspects of BDSM and your role in the community because uh, you have been working quite a bit since we first you know met last year. There have been a lot of things that you've been involved with, a lot of wonderful things that you've been doing for the BDSM community. Tell us about it. We want to know. Well. Well, Inquiry Minds wants to know. Hmm. Well, first of all, Arabelle Blue, I thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm excited about being here. So again, thank you very much. And the things that I've been doing is it is multifold. I enjoy creating activities in which others can play. But it's a double-folded message here. I like to educate people and expand those of us who within the BDSM communities expand knowledge, expand uh, create more tolerance and things of that nature. So it is a fun way to express myself as well as bringing others to play uh, with me as we educate others and expand the realms. Um, I sit on the, uh, the the throne of the Femdom Society as one of the ladies of the court mm -hmm. and we are there to support our submissives in their learning and their education. We're also always educating ourselves and we're just growing and expanding. So it's nice to be able to do the, uh, or put my energy into areas such as the adult fan shows. Um, I worked with several, but right now I do the Exotica uh, fan shows and I just love creating the dungeon experience and um, I'd like to tell you more about that, but certainly I want to make sure you can hear me and yes. I can hear you. <laughs> yeah, we, we no, can hear we're, we're, we're we're definitely listening, listening to you. I just wanted to intervene before you started discussing the Exotica and the Dungeon experience where we actually met, uh, you know, yes. because, of, because of your Dungeon experience and you reaching out it, to me and... and and having me a part of it last year at Exotica, I just wanted to go back to the Femdom Society because we know that there is a, a university that teaches people how to be submissive. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, because please do. Chuck is, you know, he's a newbie. <laughs> yes. So, uh, there, there has been a point. I'm sorry, Maribel, but I hear a piece of pieces of your uh, uh, question or oh. your, uh, you know, building of that question. So I, 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 I think you want to talk about the Femdom Society, so I'm going to go right into that. Yes. That's okay with you. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, the Femdom Society has been around for over 10 years, and we have grown to uh, well over 55,000 members uh, all over the world. Um, it initially began as an online-based opportunity for people to come together, uh, uh, meet real people, uh, to go through the universities that we have available to both folk, for both submissives and dames. Um, we do not accept, of course, uh, switch males or dominant males because this is the Femdom Society and we are living and breathing the female supremacy lifestyle. And basically what we're doing is educating um, holding true to some of the principles that all of us really believe in as that if there's more women leading, we would not have as much chaos as we have today. Thank you. <laughs> so yes, oh, really? <laughs> Thank you for that good, comment. It's a, a great place for people to come together um, at, 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 as a society, we have bought an 11,000 square foot retreat in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, mm. where we wow. hold our retreats. We have a full weekend, beginning Thursday night into Sunday afternoon of retreats. It's an intensive, so to speak. Um, personally, I enjoy the rituals and protocols of the lifestyle, and so I take on that piece in most cases, doing those types of training for the society. So with that being said, we have a thriving society creating great relationships among people who find each other and uh, learning together and growing and expanding together. Now, explain, if you will, the aspect of what a submissive male is. Yes, please explain that. Well, there are several uh, levels of the submission, so to speak. We have submissive 
persons, Miss and male, in this case we're talking about, we have those who may be more bottoms, uh, and then we have slaves, we call them, mm. in our realm. Um, so the submissive person is a person who appreciate and enjoy uh, a person to help mentor, teach them, show them, help them, uh, guide them through the different levels of sensation, play perhaps, or other forms of impact. It doesn't necessarily have to be impact play. We have submissives who may be cross-dressers or have other forms of fetishes that enjoy uh, being led by a dominant female. So from the submissive standpoint, they have a mindset of the service. They enjoy service. Their, their joy comes from serving. And a submissive who is in submission to another uh, female or dame, in that case, they are a person who is open to the exploration of service. Mm. Does, that Serv make, that, that, does that make sense No, to you? that made a lot of sense. That made a lot of sense. <laughs> Well, because she knows how to explain certain things. Yeah, yeah, you, no, that know, Because with BDSM comes education. You just don't fall into this lifestyle. Yeah. You don't go to your local shop and buy a whip and a paddle and a latex dress and say, Hi, I'm a dominatrix now. Yeah, but some females think that they could do it like that, and I'm actually being educated right now. Well, right, because I only, I only stick with the best. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Well, bless your heart, and yes, 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 all the way around the realm. I mean, you know, there are people that are interested in the lifestyle, and, and it's not to say that they cannot become interested, but it's very important, and I've always said this, that, you know, you educate yourself and put yourself around the places and the elements of, of the lifestyle that you can expand and become a little bit more knowledgeable, be more knowledgeable on the reasons, not only the reasons why you're doing it, but the reasons why someone would even come to you in the first place for you to dominate them. Now, uh, another question regarding the, the just, just the, the feminine aspect of uh, femdom. How do other women treat other women or how how should they be treated because we have a, a, a group of dominant women and I'm sure yeah. women who don't understand this lifestyle must say to themselves wow you have all of these dominant women they must be catty to one another I, I, and now I'm not in my head mm -hmm. I have some dead silence but I understand, I believe I understand where you're going with this. Yes, yes. A little so if I can pick it up from here of and share with you. Yes. You know, what, what my dominance to me means is a person who is looking and, and exploring and working towards, okay, mm -hmm. being the best person they can be. And that could be anyone, okay, mm -hmm. a label, general label for anyone, attempting to be the best that they can be. With that being said, I believe that dominant females, generally speaking, should respect each other as 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 equals, mm -hmm. as as just because. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I have a blanket, you know, statement that I make that I respect all persons, no matter of gender, you know, race, creed, uh, religion. None of those things matter. I hold high respect for myself, so therefore respect for others is just a given. But I think what happens is that if there's something that goes on with some human be you know, some humans that their behavior is a little off track and, and they feel that that dominance gives them a blanket to be, um, you know, just just rude and downright ugly to other people. Mm -hmm. um, it is not to me and for me, and nor do I respect that type of action and activity. If you get me in that space, you know, there's a cause for it, there's a reason for it, and I'll go there. Mm -hmm. You know, I am and naturally a person who would confront situations, so okay. that dominance comes out in that regard, but it's not because that I'm dominant, I do. It's just, it's my personality. So those are the personality traits that person has to look at and look at very carefully and, and hold. But, uh, you know, there are a lot of dominant, uh, dominant nation, dominance who are just downright rude, disrespectful, and uh, those people, you know, as I say on my other profiles in life, 
don't want to know yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you you clarified that because exactly. I think that can you hear me? yes, no, we we can hear you. I'm I'm just saying that I'm glad that you clarified that because we live in a society today that women can be such haters, you know, for other women's yep. beauties. And Big time. You know, the, the green-eyed monster is so ugly mm -hmm. all the time, not sometimes, all the time. Yeah. And I've had personal experience with that, and I don't like it. Yes. I stay away from yes. women like that. I think that that's Where? something else that's going on within them. I think there's something that, you know, and not to say someone is broken because of that, but mm -hmm. I mean, that word is you do so much, and it's oftentimes, you know, um, just a word thrown in, just to whatever. Mm -hmm. I just, mm -hmm. I, I feel that, you know, maybe they need help. Uh, maybe they need some therapy, perhaps. Mm. Uh, maybe they need to really take a closer look at how they're moving and matriculating through their experience mm -hmm. on this earth. Because mm -hmm. we only have one shot that I know of. And so with that being right. said, you know, I think that there's some other things that are happening and they hide behind the BDSM space. Okay. That that what? that makes that, now that, that made a whole lot of sense yes. right there. Absolutely. Yes. Experience. I, yeah, that is something deeper in that root right, right. there that they're not, you know. Exactly, exactly. Mr. C, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back on our break, we're going to talk about Exotica. You were there this May, and we yeah. want to hear all about it. So, Sounds uh, great to me. <laughs> we'll be back. Looking okay. forward to coming back. Yes, yes, we'll be back. KEM Top Talk, my my name, <laughs> my host. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My name is Maribel Blue. I'm sitting here with Chuck Platinum, yeah. who's co-hosting the show. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Ding. This is Madhouse TV. You're watching KEM Top Talk with me, Maribel Blue, my co host, Chuck Platinum. What's up? <laughs> and Mistress C out in California, Los Angeles to be specific. Yeah. And we've been talking to her about the Femdom Society, BDSM education, and what what is required for a person who's interested in submitting and being submissive to a femdom. And now we're going to talk about, I see you snickering over there. <laughs> <laughs> Try to get the whips off. <laughs> and now yeah, we're going to talk yeah. about... You know, we, you know we got some closet submissives. Bro. We got some closet submissives. I think...
think some men have a little, you know, they get like a little antsy, you know, when they hear the word submissive, because you know, who knows what they're thinking? They're probably thinking that they're going to be trapped in a dungeon Especially like Especially Chuck Platt. <laughs> Sitting there you thinking the whole. You know what, Mary Bell? That's a good thing that they are thinking it, that they be trapped in a dungeon. That's a good thing. We <laughs> like fear. We like it. I ain't that about it. Now, just recently, <laughs> <laughs> just recently, you were at Exotica for the. Actually, it was the the weekend of my birthday, May 18, 19, and twenty. <laughs> Happy birthday. Yeah, I'm sorry I missed it. No, it's okay. Oh, wait. Speaking of which, it was your birthday on the 31st. Happy birthday to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so birthday. much. It was her birthday. Say happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Sexy yeah, mistress. Yeah. See, happy birthday, girl. <laughs> That's right. But we got to sing one first for Mary Blue. Because we missed her birthday last month. And <laughs> but mine was, yeah, Thursday. And it was yeah. very nice. I had an enjoyable, relaxing day, actually, because the yes. actual party, okay, off-the-chain party, is going to be on June the 9th at Club Bar Sinister That's in right. Hollywood. That's right. right. Yeah, yeah, we did and see And when, when we, we get to California, yeah, when we get to California, we have to go to, to, to Bar Sinister. We got to take our sexy butts over there. Yeah, I'm going. <laughs> I'm in there. You have to. I might have to bring my Thanks nipple clamps. <laughs> so talk to me about what I'll happened at oh, wow. uh, wait, say that again, I didn't hear you. Well, I'm just saying, you come on down to LA, I'll take care of you guys. Okay. Mm. I'll have the dungeon ready for you, a cool. <laughs> yeah, have the dungeon ready for I'm gonna make sure I bring my nipple clamps. <laughs> I have some platinum ones. Remember, if you need some toys, <laughs> way to go. Hey, I'm on a flight tonight, baby. Better. As far as the dungeon, I'm not in this anymore. <laughs> well, I have to say, I'm not. I'm not able to hear. Can you hear me now? Absolutely. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, we good, want, good. We want to hear about oh, exotica. Like, I see you laughing. It's like I can hear. You. All right, great. Well, Exotica, you know, and I uh, went into a, a partnership business business relationship last year uh, for the Exotica Los Angeles, and, and I enjoy the relationship we have. What I do is bring on what's considered the dungeon experience, and I travel city to city with Exotica as the ambassador of the Exotica uh, dungeon, and also, you know, the performer, the, the host, and just a host of things that I do in organizing that show. Um, the Miami show was better, I mean, hugely uh, successful, more than we've expected. The numbers mm -hmm. for Exotic Miami had been from between 18 to 20,000 wow. in attendees. Wow. And over that weekend, the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of May 18th through the 20th, uh, we exceeded those numbers by over 30%. Not only that, the itself, submission, I had some beautiful um, uh, people to assist. Uh, I have to give a shout out to uh, both Dominus and Smoke of DFS Custom Dungeon Designs. Uh, they were the two brilliant craftsmen who made the 10 foot uh, or more, I'm not sure, I think it's about 10 foot high, uh, could be higher, uh, five point octagon rigging station that we use to do bondage, we use to do webbing and all type of fun things. Um, that is D and S custom designs, dungeon design out of Florida. Uh, so they are people that I like to give a lot of love out to because of, of their work and their help with the dungeon experience of Miami. We had um, spanking benches in there. We had mm. um, a medical lift chair that you know it, it gives great access to a lot of things with hit the legs or sitting white like that, you know. Interesting. Um, we had St. Andrew's crosses. We had a throne prefitting a... Oh, no, what happened? She was... <laughs> um, a queen. Okay. Uh, my queen <laughs> throne that set with legs open as a metal mm. uh, head cage. Wow. <laughs> Am I? Are you still here? No. Yes. You you you, you 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 cut out for a minute, but then you came back. 
No, because we're overwhelmed by everything that's that's uh, that's that that you're talking about. I'm like stuttering over yeah. here. I got stuck on. I'm that. stuttering in my head. <laughs> um, but Mayor Bell, you Mayor Bell, you saw what you saw in um, New Jersey in yes. November, which gathered about twenty-eight thousand um, guests. Well, our dungeon was busy, but the one in Miami was just. It was overwhelming. We had performers of all different genres mm -hmm. in there. We had, obviously, the dungeon we called it Submission, mm -hmm. um, in honor of the of those who uh, did the after party or host the after party, co-hosted with Arrows.com, which have been working with me on all of the dungeons that I've created over the last year. Um, we had Naughty Rooster as one of the, the, the sponsors for the after party. So Submission has been giving, so recent Submission of Miami has been giving the, um, the, the, the parties, you know, that, that the kinky with the BDSM twist, but basically more of a performance party, I would say more of a fetish party mm -hmm. that some of the uh, locals go to and love. They adore them. So they've been doing those parties in Miami for over a year. So it's befitting for them to be a part of the dungeon experience for Exotica and bring the energy of all of that, um, I would say, carnival look and feel mm -hmm. with the same intensity of those of us who are knowledgeable about BDSM. So we came together and had a big party, and it was just that. AVN and um, Point Star Tweets, um, Burning Angel sponsored a uh, after party on Friday night with, uh, with Exotica. And there, you know, I met with a lot of others and we partied. So it was a big party all week long. And I can't forget Cockle Pops. On Sunday, I swam yeah. away from the dungeon, you know, <laughs> they and, and got my, and, and, and my JJ shave. <laughs> and I made the camera for Cockle Pops and went on and molded my pussy. So those of you who want to lick, 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 um, go to cocklepops.com. And you can get your Mistress C uh, Pussy Pop in eight different flavors. Wow. I'm, getting, I'm getting all eight. <laughs> eight Mistress C, yeah. we want to thank you for coming on to the show and mentioning everybody. <laughs> we're, we're definitely going to put all of the mentions on 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 the on the page to to make sure that nobody was left out. And when you are visiting the New York area, you've got to come here. Yeah, make sure you come here and bring some but pussy you know, pops you with know you. That, you know that for sure, Maribel, that I will not go anywhere close to the East Coast other than Florida. Florida is still, you know, the East Coast, but it's too far from New York to say I'm on the East Coast. I'm going to come visit, you know. Um, but anywhere up there, you know, closer to you, I, I definitely will let you know. And, and i got to give a shout-out to one more person, if I may. Yes. Um, South, Southeast Life Social Magazine. Um, and let me say that again, Southeast Social Life Magazine um, has offered me a, a, a stint with them where I am doing the monthly uh, articles of BDSM in the nice. magazine. So it is a magazine hardcover that is sold uh, throughout the Southeast, but I understand that they're becoming national and what a hoot is that. So mm -hmm. uh, Southeast Social Life mm -hmm. Magazine. Um, I had the magazines there and uh, at the Exotica Experience in Miami and, and flew off the shelves. So thank you so much for those of you who have an article in those magazines. Thank you. Thank you, Mistress C, for participating uh, and, and for being here on the, on the show. Yes. Even though you're not here, here, your, your energy is here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you I'm so in, much. I'm there in spirit and through the technical airway. Yes. That's right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So when we come Thank back. You. Thank you so much. I'm happy. Love you, girl. Thank you. When we come Thank back. You. Bye for now. Bye. <laughs> love you, dear heart. Bye. Love you. We're going to get some Thank more you. pussy pops. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Bye. Get them pussy pops. Chuck is stuck on those pussy pops. <laughs> they better than Bill Cosby. When we Cosby come back, we're going to talk to Chuck Platinum, yes. and then he's going to sing a song for us. Yes. Mm. All right. We'll be back.
doing that? That's that Skype noise. Hi, everybody. What's up? <laughs> this is Maribel Blue, like I've been saying all that. I'm sure you, you know that, you know, who I am. <laughs> exactly. Can you make that stop, please? This is one of our tech people who's hiding from the camera. Tech people always hide from the camera. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Yay. No more drips. <laughs> but we Let's still have talk drinks. to oh, sorry. Mr. Platinum. Here. Yes, 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 yes. What's up, y'all? What's good? Nice to be here. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. So what's going on with you? Wow. Tell us. Um, Speak to us. <laughs> what's going on with Chuck Platinum? Uh, Chuck Platinum is... Uh, you know, right now I'm currently working on several projects right now. Um, you know, that's that's pretty much what I'm doing. I've been traveling, um, you know, still promoting my first project, uh, which is a mixtape that I dropped last year called I Am Legend. Yes, and it's not, actually, it's on the magazine, the interview that I did. Yeah, yeah, shout yes. out to you. Great, great interview. Kinky Magazine. Yes, right mm -hmm. on Kinky Magazine. Um, so that, that mixtape has gotten very, very good responses. So I'm going back in to do part two. I'm currently working on the music right now, mm -hmm. just getting the, you know, the music and everything together, the placements and, you know, how I'm going to go with the project is definitely going to be different than the last one. Very big music, a lot of more big music. Because the first one I was just kind of, you know, it was my first project that I released on an international scale mm -hmm. so I was just kind of playing around just to kind of see if people liked it and you know I got a great response and so now I'm going all the way in with this one you know where do you get your inspiration from to write your music um everywhere everywhere um the the biggest inspiration that I get to write is is from my life mm -hmm. um didn't you live in California? I lived in California. Yeah, I, lived in the, I lived in the Bay Area for a little bit. You know, you know, I did my little jail time out there, so to speak. <clears throat> yeah, but it wasn't. It no. wasn't great for you. Nah, nah. California. No, I no. It in was, the beginning, it was great, but then. Yeah, in the beginning, it was. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I everybody that knows, you know, I I, I was out there I got married mm -hmm. and I was out there and you know it kind of went pew pew you know mm -hmm. so um, mm -hmm. but I went out there and did what I did made music and I uh, made a lot of connections out there so I didn't lose all the way mm -hmm. you know going out there so yeah it was it, it was a definite trying time but you know what came out of it is a lot of good material a lot of great contacts a lot of great connections so do you know. think a lot of the music today that's inspired by people because I, I think my own personal opinion a lot of today's mainstream type of music right other people are writing it mm -hmm. for these musicians right. and I use the term loosely right. to sing to make a hit record mm -hmm. like how does that make you feel to know that you write songs out of your own heart and soul do right. you understand what I'm saying I, I think that it's it's fine, I, it, you know. Since the beginning of music, you know, when you think about songwriting, people mm -hmm. do the same thing that I do. You know, they channel an energy from somewhere, and what happens is that they, that's where a hit record comes from. The marriage of what's related to versus the music and everything like that. So, I'm not against it at all. You know what what I what I don't like in my particular genre is somebody kind of ghost writing and mm -hmm. you know with with hip hop it's a little bit different. Right. You know, um with songs, you know, you could pull songs and inspiration out of anywhere, but when you're talking about hip hop, it's a little bit different right. because you You can't talk about or you can't sing about living a rough life. Right. If you were living up on a hill in a castle. Exactly. Because you but can't people, relate to that. Yeah, but people do. Yeah. And, then, you know, that's where it becomes, you know, the fabrications and everything. Like, you know, there's a couple of people that there's known to write. Like Dr. Dre, for instance. He's somebody that, he's a musician that mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily write. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you, he has people write for him. Mm -hmm. But he's there to kind of, like, guide them with his thoughts. He probably mm -hmm. just can't put the specific thoughts together, mm -hmm, you know. So... Mm -hmm. He's about the only one that I kind of would accept from it. But you have a lot of people that has hinted that there has been some ghostwriting going on for them 
and that I don't really agree with. Being that I've been writing. Well, so I mean, long. I think the same can say for people who claim that they're, you know, dominatrixes and they have all this experience. Exactly. And again, it's like going into a local store right. and buying the outfit and acting like it, yeah. but you don't have the experience. Right, you're not playing the part. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, for me, you know, and in and, and your genre and your field, I'm sure that you take what you do very seriously. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with me. You know, if somebody comes and, and is portraying something that they're not, then that's not somebody that I really would want to work with mm -hmm. or even want to be around because mm -hmm. I take this is a 24 hour, seven right. days a week thing for me. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so I take that. Very Do you seriously. you own your own engineering studio? Uh, yeah, I, I'm in part. I have a partnership. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, with uh, with my partner, um, Extreme 104 FM. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we just started that out so you know so and you have people come in and yeah. record their music right they record the music uh, we also have a broadcast inside mm -hmm. so you know we do that and um you know, it's, 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 it's a good situation, you know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a good situation. Do you think now in this day and age that the hip-hop community is much more of a close-knit community than it was once upon a time when you had Tupac that was alive and, and Biggie? There just seemed to be this separation. I mean, first you had mm -hmm. um, Run DMC. Remember, right. like, back in the day, everybody mm -hmm. was just seemed in yeah. unison. And right. then you had this... This this war rap going on with East Coast West Coast, and now do you think it's different now? Do you think there's much more of a of a close knit of everybody promoting? And yeah, I, I think that is close knit because now in the game, you know, artists are a lot smarter now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, you had the stages in hip hop where you know we didn't really know about the money and stuff like that, and then once we f found out that we could capitalize off of it, mm -hmm. and you know the big rigs like there was the big six and then mm -hmm. there was the big five the big those are the labels you mm -hmm. know now mm -hmm. it's the big three right so now as they're consolidating mm -hmm. it's more independent and because of the uh you know the internet and everything now uh more mainstream artists are doing things more independently because they they're not they don't have to wait for the labels anymore they exactly. don't have to wait for the majors anymore they could go ahead and make the collaborations on collaborations that might not have happened mm -hmm. 10 years ago or 12 years ago so that comes from you know being more independent and being more in tune and not waiting for a label to do something for you when you can do it yourself that's why the labels are so scared right now because mm -hmm. you know we're finally getting smart and being about our business. That's right. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to scare the labels after this commercial break. We're going to have Chuck Platinum sing Secret Service. Secret Service. Ooh. Yeah. We'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> The rest of you are all right. It's all right, man. Go in there without me. But wait, it's all right. But we're not in that, are we? We're not leaving it. Uh, actually, mate, I think we're probably going to try somewhere else instead. Huh. Cheers, my boys. That's rubbish anyway. Check out the... Dude! Are you watching When Harry Met Sally? What? No. No. There's probably a game on. Probably. When you realize you want to spend the rest of your life with somebody, you want the rest of your life to start as, as soon, soon as... as po oh! This doesn't leave the room. Definitely not. For a great movie night, make it pop. Greetings from the windy city of Chicago. People here sure are friendly, but some have had a hard time understanding my accent. So, to make sure people get every word of the Geico Savings message, I've been practicing how to talk like a true Chicagoan. <clears throat> 
Switching to Geico could save you hundreds of dollars on car insurance. Da bears. <laughs> you people sure do talk funny. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. It's Chuck Platinum in the building Madhouse TV. About to do my song, hit record, Secret Service, off the I Am Legend project produced by Chuck Platinum. Let's go. Yeah. I love that, baby. Come alive, baby. Oh. No, we can't. Yes, sir. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah baby. baby. You know, I'm usually on my rough side of things, but um, I couldn't help it. Said you feel so good, baby. You know that you feel so good. Yeah. You know that you feel so good, baby. You know that you feel so good, like. You know that you feel so good, baby. You know that you feel so good. It's like, yeah. Uh, uh. I love the look in your eyes when you're loving me right. Feeling safe and secure when I'm holding you tight. Like the look at your body, don't turn off the lights. I'm the pilot of this plane, we about to take flight. Baby, you never felt this way before. Strong hands around your waist as you crave for more. Lay down on the bed, start kissing your lips. Grind slow with my clothes on and sink with your hips. Close your eyes, feel my tongue when your fingertips make you sprung. Cause my style never sticks to the script. You start to squirm as I begin to taste your love. Harvest brown when I go down, things we do for love. You're my fantasy come real. I dreamt in this moment. All my Zilla shit, I'm about to get up on it I'm giving you a warning, cause I'm so horny And I'm about to ride the wave all the way to the morning I make it hot, baby, you know I make it safe And when we go downtown, there's no place to Baby, yo, you feel so good, baby, you know that you feel so good Baby, yo, you feel so good, baby, you know that you feel so good Everything that you feel is what it seems I'm the man that you used to fantasize in your dreams About the night and shine the armor, no doubt Made love to your soul when I take this route Penetrate your body, you can feel me real deep Every inch of my manhood between your sheets And you feel like silk cream, sweet like milk Except every calorie without feeling guilt I'm a part of you now, we're combined as one And the way to your heart has just begun And you feel all my power in every thrust This is the difference between love and lust I feel a climax coming, baby, tighten up We could both come, fireworks, light it up You scream loud, honey, here's a pillow, bite it up Tomorrow is your testimony, you can write it up I make it hot, baby, you know I make it say And when we go downtown, there's no place to Baby, yo, you feel so good, baby, you know that you feel so good Baby, yo, you feel so good Baby, you know that you feel so good I'll make love to you till the morning Smile when we both see sunlight Cook your breakfast in bed, baby Make you feel alright Seal this ordeal with a kiss Loving you is at the top of my list Wasn't easy expressing words for this But the verb makes this love always a hit Phone sex or sex text My deep voice got you real wet Soaked all the way through your new penny set Come through the door, now what's next? Got you spread out, about to go in Eddie Kendricks, intimate friends That's a little old school, hope you comprehend Orgasm after orgasm, take out your wind I make it hot, baby, you know I make it say And when we go downtown, there's no place to Baby, yo, you feel so good Baby, you know that you feel so good uh, baby, yo, you feel so good Baby, you know that you feel so good Yeah, it's for all the ladies out there, baby Let me be a secret service Uh-huh Chuck, 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 Chuck right now. Yeah, BX, stand up No cocaine It's how we do, baby KM, Top Talk, we in the building Salute
things America got right. Cars and freedom. Hello. <laughs> How do you do? We're back. We were just, uh... uh... Hi, we're back. <laughs> we're back. Hey, I got my girl. Wow, I, I have a little bit of saliva coming out of my mouth. Good. <laughs> Good. That's the effect that we wanted from that song right there. That's what I'm talking about. We accomplished the goal. Ooh, and, and now it's hot in here. Yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. Well, that's you right there. Oh. I want. I made. I want to make sure you know. I pick something real appropriate. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I loved it. And Good. thank you for coming into the show. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you to Mistress C, who's not only a friend but my mentor on uh, joining KEM Top Talk. And next week we'll be back with. A slew of people. <laughs> <laughs> a slew. This is Madhouse TV. This is KEM Top Talk. Which camera am I looking at? <laughs> I'm looking at three. Love you guys and come back next week. Watch no, us. No. Madhouse TV, baby. <laughs> We're good.